All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning and welcome to the second in our series of webinars being presented exclusively to the triad hosted by Listing Book, helping you make clients for life. Even though we have a national presence and are doing monthly webinars bringing relevant and actionable content to realtors on a national basis, someone who I believe most, if not all of you know and have come to appreciate over the years, wanted to have special series just for the triad. My name is John Kellogg, one of your hosts today, and I'm excited to be joined by one of your very own, as well as one of the founders of Listing Book, Joan Millman. Joan, I know with your experience in the marketplace, you understand the value of creating a client for life, and in part, that was the motivation for the creation of Listing Book. Can you tell us about that? Thank you, John. I am so excited about today's webinar, Clients for Life. Using technology is the most efficient way to build customer loyalty and an agent's business. By the way, speaking about technology, Listing Book is a great resource not only before, but after the sale. It reminds your customers you are their real estate guru as they continue to check out homes in their new neighborhood. Well, Joan, that's a great segue into our webinar. We're excited to have as our presenters today Jordan and Justin, the managing partners of Cave Social. Cave Social is a social media uh, marketing agency that specializes in real estate marketing. Jordan and Justin are contributors to Inman News, Riz Media, and RE Technology. Today they're going to be talking with us about how to make clients for life. A couple of things before we start. Not only will you want to stay around for the great content, but also at the end of the webinar you'll want to participate in our drawing for a free iPad, so stick around. Also after the presentation we'll have a Q&A session and we tend to have some of our best content responding to your questions. Well, Jordan and Justin, what do you have for us today? Hey, John, thanks uh, Thanks for the, the kind words there in the intro. Guys, we're super excited. Today we're going to be walking through and going through really how you guys can up, up the retention rate and really create, you know, as this webinar is titled, Clients for Life. So more specifically, Justin and I are going to be talking about, you know, the current state of real estate and client retention and, and why this is such a monster, monster inch, uh, issue right now. Um, how to change our mindset a little bit. And we're gonna, what we like to do in these is, you know, give you kind of the high level stuff, but then also follow it up with some actionable advice. So we are gonna go and give you a couple steps that you can start implementing right away into your funnel and into your sales strategy to help you, you know, create clients. And then lastly, how do you turn clients into your personal sales force? So here's the current state. And this is something that's a, a big issue is we see that, you know, 73% of home buyers, 65% of sellers have come out and said that they'd like to use the same agent again. And this is right from realtor.org and NAR actually reports uh, similar findings. So, you know, that sounds pretty good, right? And if we sit here and say, okay, hey, most people want to, you know, most people want to come back and actually use an agent multiple times. But here's the big problem. Only 25% of people are. So one in four people are coming back and using the same agent multiple times. This is, you know, I don't have to tell you guys, you can see this is a giant problem, right? So how do we change this? And really, before we look at how we change this, we've got to look at why, why is this occurring. The main reason this is happening is because real estate, I mean, I don't need to tell you guys this, right? It's a, the sales cycle is five to seven years. And with that long of a sales cycle, combined with the fact that, you know, I, I get it. You guys, you, you got to, you know, put food on the table, so to speak. You have to get the, the short-term need for commissions. Uh, it really causes us to change our thinking and think, okay, how do we get the next lead, right? How we're worried about the next one. And this kind of causes this disconnect between, you know, we forget about relationships, they fall to the wayside because, yeah, it is, you know, the next sale that you might get from a particular client might be five to seven years down the road. And that's a long time to wait, right? 
So this is something that. I think, no. oh, sorry, go ahead, Justin. I, I, yeah, I just think I think one of the things to keep in mind here is that it's not necessarily, um, you know, it's not necessarily costly as well. If you are looking to uh, to keep a client, and you know, obviously the, the sales cycle is seven years, but if you're looking to keep someone, you don't necessarily have to invest as much that you would in hunting for new clients and trying to find new people and fill up your funnel. So, it, it, you know, it's, a, it's not always a big investment. It just it takes time and it takes you know it takes organization to do it. So, um, just want to keep that in mind. Yeah, I believe Nara put out a, uh, a stat too that it's five times more costly to get a new client right. than it is to get a return client. So th this is something too we got to think about, right? When we look at are we hunting for leads or are we nurturing and, and farming our existing leads, our existing client base? Because though a person's only going to purchase every seven years, you guys know more than me that referrals are the lifeblood of, of the real estate business. And you're going to get one, two, three, four, who knows how many referrals from that person if you're able to keep contact with them and really kind of build this client for life. So this is where we see, you know, the real estate industry right now and really a, a hurdle for realtors, but also a giant opportunity to start really yeah. closing that gap, right, between that, you know, if we can get that retention rate up to 40, 50 percent, you know, that's just more business for you guys and, and really more people that are happy, they get comfortable, you know, they get comfortable with the, using the same agent. And, it, you know, when people move, they, most of the time the neighborhood jump and they go into a more expensive place, right? So that does equal bigger commissions as well. So there's a lot of positives with, you know, nurturing and really, really taking, uh, you know, taking control of how you handle your, your past clients. Next, we're going to get into the actionable tips. So... These are tips that Justin and I, we've worked with agents and brokerages nationwide with going and, and doing trainings and really helping people, you know, understand this idea of, of retention because it's something that we believe is so important. And with this, we, want, we really want to bring back these, you know, four or five major things that we think can help you guys out. So... Here, here's the first one, and it sounds so simple, and it's just saying thanks to past clients. Now, what I would say is there's a couple things, right? That sounds easy for me to say, hey, just say thanks. There are a couple things that you can do right away. So, one, a lot of times, you know, you have the ability to throw a housewarming party right after closing and kind of, you know, pay back, so to speak, um, you know, your, your clients. And this presents a great opportunity. So if you, you know, hey, throw a housewarming party or even just attend and bring, bring some wine, whatever it may be, not, you're there, but now you've opened yourself, one, you've made your client feel warm and fuzzy because, hey, look at, you know, my realtor is, is becoming my friend, which is what we want to really accomplish. Two, you're now introduced to their network and people who are close to them. And this is where you can really start to cultivate, you know, leads just from a housewarming party. I think this is so, so, you know, underused that people aren't doing it. They're sending a card or they're sending, you know, flyers, calendars, whatever, magnets. But if you actually get in there and shake hands, get face to face with people, you're going to start to see the results. And another thing, and Justin, you know, you've talked about this before, and if you want to speak on it a little bit, but just even, you know, how do you you know, calling other people. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. I just think that um, some, it, it's super important to keep in mind that you don't always have to be going for the sale. Um, just checking in on people can be super valuable. And, and, and if people do then, like Jordan said, see you as a friend, you're definitely going to stay top of mind. That's the way that you keep a client is, is by becoming their friend as opposed to, you know, this person that, that only sends them push marketing. Um, so I think it's just important to keep in mind that you don't always have to be making sales calls. They can be um, check-in calls. You know? Right. Just say, hey, how you doing? You know, yeah. what's new? Yeah. Uh, let, hey, yeah. we should grab a coffee. Right? Like those are the types of things where you start to build those relationships past just the point of sale. Yeah. The next thing you have to do is really use a, a CRM mindset. And 
take it to, okay, you know, building off what Justin said, where you're going to check in with people. But really, you know, there's, you know, all of these systems and the conventional real estate training says, you know, no marketing is bad marketing. Get in front of your clients. Send flyers. Like, you know, make sure to send a calendar or a Christmas card. All this stuff, right? But if we look at what's really happening on the consumer side and what and what the customers and what people are feeling, it's, oh, another flyer. Oh, another calendar, right? Oh, another fridge magnet. There's no emotion attached when I get a calendar from any business or if I get a five mini business. I'm not like, oh, that's, uh, you know, I don't feel warm and fuzzy about it. I, I probably will just use the calendar on my phone. So really what we want to do is take this mindset of stuff that may have worked 10, 15 years ago, these different tools, but really look at what do our clients want today. Before, things like calendars were more useful. Now everyone's got a calendar hooked up to their phone, hooked up to their email. You know, it's everything, everything for the next three weeks of their life is probably plotted in their phone. So what we know today is customers actually want relevant data about their neighborhood. We know when we look at NAR and we look at the reports, people say that they favored having living in like a good neighborhood over the house or the property that they're on. So we see that the consumer is putting a ton of value in their neighborhood and they want to know, you know, they want to know about their neighborhood articles, if you have any data, walk scores, the crime rate, all of that kind of stuff is very useful to them. Also seeing after the point of sale, hey, if you want to, if, if there's been a big jump in the market, say there's been a 10% jump right go and say hey just so you know these houses around you are selling for this much and they sold for that much last year this is data that your clients want right you're able to take that and go through and, and really present them with the, what the stuff that they're hungry for and this is something that, that uh, I mean Justin you want to talk a little bit I think listing book has some of this good functionality yeah. as well I, I, I think that um, it's really important to keep in mind that today's generation really wants the tools um, when, when they're searching for homes. They want to be using the same tools that realtors are using or the, or the best search possible, right? I mean, I, I feel like everyone nowadays, you know, you can go look for absolutely anything on the web and you can probably find it. So it's, it's, it's you know, everyone, it's almost expected that you should have the, the best search, um, whether you're just a client or whether you are a realtor. So. Um, you know, the listing book platform is definitely something that, that gives your clients um, the ability to search like an agent. And, you know, when they do that, they stay happy. They get all of the updated statistics. They get um, all the local neighborhood information. And you get to see um, what they're searching for and how active they are in listing books. So it's kind of a, a win-win, I would say. Yeah, that's great. Um, the next thing you can do. And... This is kind of building off that, right? You're giving people, you, we've been talking a lot, and on this webinar series, we talk a lot about using social media, about, you know, creating relationships, and really what we're talking about is, you know, how do we take these offline relationships that you're building at Christmas parties, that you're building at company events, and bring them online? And one of the ways that is, is really a great tool that everyone can use is, is the use of social media. And this doesn't have to. This doesn't mean you have to be a power user and have 19 apps and be on Periscope, Snapchat. It, it can be as much as you update your Facebook a couple times a week, and you not even update it. You use your Facebook and go and engage with other people, or you use Twitter and go and engage with other people. One of the things we see is that people are on social media, but they're not social, right? It, it's not your Facebook page isn't your soapbox to go on and just talk or just just put up listings or, you know, just saying buy for me, buy for me, buy for me. It's really a place where you can build community. And what I mean by that is you're able to go through and comment on other people's things, add value, add funny stuff to conversations, show your expertise. Those articles that you're getting or data that you're getting that, you know, is really relevant to your clients, that stuff is relevant to other people too that could eventually be a client. So putting that kind of stuff on the Internet is a great way to, to really ramp up, you know, your brand and, and, and get some trust behind your name. Yeah, and, um, you know, it, it's kind of like we were saying about how, you know, becoming a friend is so important as opposed to, you know, just being a salesperson. And, and social media is definitely a spot where you can 
you know, you can make new friends and people can see a different side of you and, and you can really, you know, let yourself shine. Um, and, and there's so many other things about social media that are really important when it comes to retaining clients. And, you know, one of the things that we always recommend um, to agents and that, you know, when we talk to, to agents, they tell us, you know, this is a great way to stay top of mind is um, you can actually advertise to people who like your Facebook page. Um, so you wouldn't be advertising to anyone except for those people who already like your page. If you just put $5 a month into that, everyone in your Facebook page is going to see your page um, at least you know a couple of times a month. And that's, that's a really great way just to keep people top of, or just to keep you top of mind. Um, because those are the connect, the people that like your page are, are those people that have already connected with you. Maybe they've bought from you before, maybe they're considering it. And staying in front of them, you know, for five bucks a month, it's really, it's really simple to do on Facebook, and it's a really cost-effective way of doing it. So, um, we definitely recommend that in the client retention game. No, and, and that's, you know, it's, it's like we said, right? It's all building off each other. And then, this is something. The next slide is something before we get to it that I think people who are on the other side who are really active on social media and have kind of embraced this and are like, okay, and you're building the community is you got to ask for referrals. You got to be okay with it, you know, once in a while sprinkling in some messaging that's asking for referrals online, asking people, um, you know, in person. And, and you know, the other thing and really what we've been building on here is asking without asking, right? is something that is super useful and asking without asking is just being top of mind being that friend now i am going to drop uh there's a great ted talk that does more justice on how to ask and why you should be asking people if you have you know friends and family a lot of times people shy away from the people that are closest to them uh but you know by asking on social this doesn't mean putting out a facebook status that says you know Hey, I love referrals. You know, come work with me. I'm Johnny Smith, the realtor. This means actually talking to people, cultivating your relationships, and then saying, "Hey, you know, it, as always, if you know someone um, who's looking to buy or sell or just needs some advice, I, I'd love to help." And we see here, like right now, if you guys have gotten the majority of your business through referrals, can you just type uh, yes right now into the chat? Right, so we see them starting to pile in. Yes, 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 yeah. Right, like this is. We know this to be true, right? So we have to look at if we know this is true. We get a lot of business through referrals. That means one, we got to do great work. Two, we got to create great relationships. But three, we got to find a way to get those relationships to create more relationships. And I think, yeah. it's just, and it's also it's also a really good measuring stick um, for. Have you created a client for life? Because you know, if someone's referring you, the person who's referring you, you've probably turned into a client for life. So if you are getting referrals, it's it's a really good way to measure um, how you're doing in the retention game too. So super important. Yeah, and and guys, that's um, those are our tips, to, and that's we're gonna pass it back off to John. I know he's got um, he's got some stuff to talk to you guys about before we open it up for Q and Q and A. Guys, stick around for Q and A. We're going to be on here for 20, 25 minutes answering anything and everything um, you guys have to <laughs> want to know about with marketing. Wow, Jordan and Justin, what great content. And I'm always impressed with how relevant your material is and your ability to make it actionable to our audience. And as promised, we'll take some time to answer your specific questions if you'll just begin typing them uh, into the chat box. And Joan, while they're typing in their questions, do you have any thoughts before we move on to our Q&A time? Well, John, as a reminder, the Provider Service Guide and Listing Book is one of the sticky tools you can use to continue building relationships to create clients for life. It will become your client's go-to place for any real estate-related service providers. So agents, make sure you nominate your favorite providers to include in the guide, and remember, Subscribe providers also help you learn credit through your receiver gold service. For more information, you can contact me at 336-918-0159, and that's being typed in your sidebar right now. 
Thanks, Joan. And uh, while Justin and Jordan are, are, are getting the questions together, we wanted to remind you of our iPad giveaway after the Q&A. And um, Jordan and Justin, how are, how are we doing? We're doing great. We're doing great. Uh, we, we, yeah, we've got some uh, questions rolling in here. Um, let's see. Let's, let's get to this first one here. Um, Jordan, what would you say to an agent who's just starting out on the topic of uh, client retention? Um, so if you're just starting out, um, I'm guessing that means I'm going to take that in the context of, hey, I'm a new agent. So how do I you know, get, get these clients, right? What I would do is I would go, um, I would go old school, and I would go to every networking event I could. I would check events on, and I, I, I would go check events on if there's any local festivals, you name it. I would also go and look at local business development, and I would look at how I can do this kind of like how how I can get down and dirty, nitty gritty, and I would go to every single like moving company, for instance. And I would look to try to create partnerships, try to get people who have, you know, moving companies, maybe take them out for a coffee, whatever it may be, but really start to look at how can I leverage other and really make relationships with like similar businesses, you know, that we share the same customer base, but it might be a different product. Because if you can become, you know, the go-to real estate agent on the biggest moving company in the triad uh, area, you're winning, right? So that's... Yeah. I would just go old school and really local business development. Right, exactly. Okay, so we've got another question here. Um, if I create an ad on Facebook to stay in front of my clients, what should it say or include in the ad? Um, so something that Jordan and I recommend when you're boosting a post or creating an ad on Facebook to stay in front of people is that you don't necessarily um, put up a post you know, of a listing that you have or of a hard sell. We like to provide people with useful, relevant information. Um, so one thing that you can do is um, maybe there's a article that you read this month on the best restaurants in your area. That that would be the type of article that we'd like to see you boost on Facebook, on Facebook um, to get all of your clients to see because you're providing them with that content and they're associating that with your Facebook page. So it's just kind of a, a great way to stay in front of people. It doesn't always have to be a sell. It's just a, a, a nice soft way of providing people with value, um, which is really the name of the game in client retention. Okay. Another question here, Jordan. Um, what social networks should I definitely be on? Uh, if I was going to be, you know, if I was starting tomorrow and, and I was going to be on social media, I would say put the majority of your effort into Facebook and Facebook business pages, uh, and then the next one I would do would be LinkedIn and Twitter, kind of. I, I'd make those are the big three. Um, uh, but Facebook would be, I mean, that's where that's where the buyers are right now. That's where that, you know, 25 to, you know, 65-year-olds and up are, are, are on and checking daily. So that's where I would go first. Um, that's something that, yeah, at least where I would start to put the attention. That's where your buyers are going to be and you can get in front of the relevant people. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, and uh, oh, man, yeah, we've got a lot of questions coming in here. Okay. Um, if uh, Let's see. If you do not have a personal circle that you can rely on, um, where would you go to next? Where's the first place you would go um, to be finding those, those referrals? Okay. If I don't have a, a personal circle to rely on, this kind of comes back to the, the one where you're just starting out. I would go and I would look at um, I would look at things like your meetup groups in your area that are maybe doing tech, whatever it may be. Like if you don't have a personal circle, you gotta that's the first thing you gotta start to make one, right? And if you're new to a city, that might mean joining a, a softball team. Something as similar, you know, joining the or a chess club or whatever you're into, whatever you're passionate about. It could be the, I'm sure there's groups that discuss movies, you know, if movies are your thing, um, or whatever it may be, and go and start to really, you know, build out that circle uh, and then start to, you know, people will then be more likely to refer you. Yeah, for sure. 
Okay, so we've, we've got some people here, um, I think, asking for a little bit more clarification on Facebook ads. So I'll, I'll speak to that a little bit. Um, one, one of the things, that, like I've been saying, that, that we recommend is, is running um, you know, small Facebook ads month a month. And the way that you do that is on your Facebook page, when you start posting content, um, there'll be a little button in the bottom right-hand corner of every single post that you write that says Boost Post. And if you click on Boost Post, you'll then see options to advertise. And there'll be about four or five um, uh, little categories that you can fill out. You can select your budget, how long you want the ad to run for, and, and who you want to see the ad. Um, and once you fill all that, all that information out, you then put your credit card information in, and your ad will start being shown to the people that you select. So when we're talking about client retention here, what we recommend is you spend 5 to $10 a month you target people in your area or people that already like your page. Um, when it comes to client retention, targeting people who already like your Facebook page is a really great thing to do. Um, and then you set the ad to run for just a couple days. And it's just a way of ensuring that everyone on Facebook who you've already connected with sees your content and sees the things you're posting. Um, so, so it's definitely something worth checking out. Okay. Uh, what about Twitter for client retention, Jordan? Is that something that, that uh, I should be focused on? That's a, a question. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I think Twitter it, look, Twitter with client retention, I wouldn't put it in that mindset of like, hey, should I be focused on Twitter for client retention? You should just be focused on Twitter and, and, and in talking and engaging with the people that you know and people that are in your area that you might not know. Uh, I think it's just one of those things where in the whole kind of you know, point of this webinar is you've got to stay top of mind without asking, right? Without coming out and just continually saying, buy from me, buy from me, buy from me. So I think Twitter is a great place to connect with people. And when they're, when somebody tweets something that you know, um, engage with that person and, you know, give your two cents, retweet, make them feel warm and fuzzy first. And then they'll have the, you know, the mindset and they'll want to reciprocate that feeling. So. Right. What about um, here? We've got a we've got a specific question on a specific demographic. Um, do you have any tips on reaching um, 65 plus year olds who are downsizing or moving to retirement homes? Um, is this general? Is this population on social media? Is there another way that uh, that I should be targeting them? So they're actually the fastest growing demographic on Facebook. So people are finally getting it, figuring it out. Another thing I would do is uh, with that demographic, they're, they're, I would run and I would look at things like Bing ads because most people who are um, of that age, they, they, they don't care about what browser they use. So Internet Explorer's default browser is Bing, um, or sorry, the search engine is Bing, opposed to majority of people who quickly download, you know, Chrome or Firefox and use Google, uh, that demographic is pretty alive and well on Bing and then also Yahoo. So you can experiment with some stuff there. But um, yeah, I, I would look at um, Facebook and and um, as a place to start. You have people really, really going there. And the other thing you got to remember too, right, is you're selling to people who are 65 plus. Those people have kids who are 45 who are on Facebook, right? Who, who might be driving yeah, and, some of that decision too, right? Yeah, and it's uh, it's interesting too because, I mean, if, if that's your demographic, you can select on Facebook to only show ads to people who are 65 plus, live in your area, and are interested in, in retirement homes or are, are looking to move in the next six months. So um, it's not if you do have really detailed demographics like that, you may be paying a little bit extra per click, but you're going to be hitting your target audience you know exactly so it, it's a good use of dollars for sure despite maybe you know it might not be what you think uh, it might not be the natural thing that you would think but uh, like Jordan said fastest growing demographic on social media is that uh, 55 plus demographic so um, something to watch for sure okay, okay. Anything else there, Jordan? Yeah, I see one just on how to reach and capture for new construction. 
um, if there's been like you know a new development or whatever and a lot of units there what I would do is like Justin said I would go to Facebook ads um, and I would I would set up Facebook advertisements targeted you can actually pick people showing signs to move but I would look at that building and or the development and say okay hey this is a you know uh, community for retired folks or maybe it's first-time buyers and I would really look at building out that segment in really just taking the uh, Facebook makes it pretty straightforward but going in advertising to that demographic would be how I would do it um, yeah I think that's it for the questions guys uh, we're gonna I know John has to uh, announce a winner for you guys so I'll pass it back over to John Hey, thanks, guys. Again, I really appreciate the content and then just your ability to, to field questions and, uh, and bring some value there as well. Um, I did want to point out that uh, we have uh, Joan's phone number if you wanted to get more information about how to use the provider serve clients for life. Um, so I'll mention that number again is 336-918. 0159. It's also been written up in the, in your screen. But you could also at this time, if you just would like to have Joan reach out to you and give you a better understanding of listing book and or how to best use the provider service guide, if you just want to type um, your name or just yes contact in, uh, in the area uh, on your screen, then we'll be able to follow up with you uh, directly. But I wanted to announce a winner, and so what I need to have happen is we said that this would be for somebody who's still on the call, and so uh, the winner today uh, is Barbara Kitchen if she's on the uh, on the call. So if you are, please type um, "I'm here" and your name will show up beside it, and we'll know to uh, to forward that on to you. And otherwise, we have somebody else. All right, uh, Barbara Kitchen, you need to type in yes. I'm here if you would like to receive the iPad. Okay, well then our second... Uh, oh, I think she raised her hand. Oh, good. Okay, great. Um, do me a favor, and if you would, call the number... Uh, on uh, that we have listed for Joan, and then she can get the information to uh, to forward uh, to to get you the iPad. And congratulations! Well, Joan, I think it's been another great addition to our series, don't you? Yeah, a lot of good information. And we want to thank Jordan and Justin from Cave Group, and also thank those of you who continue to use the tools available from Listing Book, helping you make clients for life. It's been fun. And on behalf of Jordan, Justin, Joan, and all of us at Listing Book, make it a great day of sales.